Let's start off with just a, a look at where we've come and this late surge in 2020 coming through for this cryptocurrency and others, we should add as well. Does it mean that, in a sense, Bitcoin has arrived? Because I think you're of the volition that, it, that 2020 was a year of a regulatory evolution. I'm just reading what you've said. And uh, 2021 will be the year of institutionalization. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, that's very much the case. And obviously, you know, the recent rally has, has captured a lot of headlines given uh, the pace of, uh, of change. But uh, in our view, this has been building for some time. And as you, as you mentioned there, um, you know, 2020 was a year of significant progress on two of the key factors really required by institutions to uh, allocate capital to the space. And that was first and foremost regulation. And, and we ourselves were the benefit of SFC licensing in Hong Kong, specifically for what they deem as virtual assets. And secondly, secure custody and safekeeping. And now that those two problems are solved, uh, this rally is very much being uh, led by the institutional capital allocation to the space, which is very different to the, what, what we saw in late 2017. And Wayne, that, that brings me to another point. OK, sure, but that the next step will be for it to become a, a form of payment, a, a mainstream payment method. But surely it can't be that if we're going to have these wild oscillations in its value. Yeah, good question. Obviously, uh, Bitcoin's gathered, uh, Bitcoin itself has gathered a lot of attention and is clearly uh, you know, getting the attention of those looking for a, uh, a store of value and an alternative to, uh, to central bank fiat currencies, which are obviously uh, experiencing a lot of uh, printing from central banks and so on. Um, as far as its utility uh, as a payment method goes, look, the uh, integration into the, the likes of PayPal's platform, I guess, is a step in the right direction there. There's also a whole heap of additional scalability uh, improvements being worked on for the technology itself. But what I think is also interesting is that uh, initiatives like China's uh, CBDC initiative or the DCEP initiative um, is, is another step towards uh, digital payment becoming mainstream uh, more broadly. And the, the more of those types of uh, initiatives we have, the more people become used to dealing with digital payments, uh, which, is broad, which is good for the broader digital asset uh, ecosystem. Wayne, speaking of the severe volatility in Bitcoin, how do you assess, how do you analyze Bitcoin's fundamentals? Sure, good question. On, on, look, on the volatility, we, we definitely expect over time volatility to subside, uh, given the regulatory progress that has been made and the increased surveillance of the participants in the market uh, that will be required. Um, in addition, as more and more institutional activity uh, continues to come to the space, I think we'll see uh, less of those wild swings that uh, you know many have become uh, used to over the last few years. Um, so I, I think they're, uh, they're really key things to, uh, to bear in mind with respect to its volatility profile going forward. You talked about how 2021 will be a year for Bitcoin to get institutionalized. How about 2021 being the year when Robinhood investors get into the act? I mean, uh, do you see that happening this year? Uh, that's a good question. Whilst, whilst this rally uh, has definitely been much more institutionally led, we are seeing signs of, uh, of, of retail interest and activity starting to follow on now. You know, if you if you Google, uh, if you look at the, uh, the the number of times Bitcoin is being Googled again, it's uh, those levels are five times what they were just a few months ago. Um, so the, the rally uh, is, is definitely garnering the attention of not only institutions but uh, but the more uh, retail uh, end of the market as well. Bitcoin, what is the biggest hurdle that you uh, foresee for your views to uh, be kind of derailed? Um, look, I think a couple of years ago, it was a lot less clear and a lot less certain um, when we didn't have the regulatory clarity that we have today. That was definitely a key piece of the puzzle. Uh, that's now been largely sold. And, and certainly in, in Asia, uh, we've seen the, the regulators uh, being quite uh, forward thinking, but also having a very clear uh, agenda to, to protect investors uh, with, with the frameworks that they put out. So that's been sold. As I said before, the other big hurdle was, was custody, secure, insured and safe custody of assets. Uh, that too has been solved. Uh, so I think um, probably the last remaining piece is, I guess, uh, regulators globally collaborating cross-border. 
Um, and that is starting to happen now. We have uh, industry bodies who are working on uh, on collaborating across borders, uh, but that's probably the probably the one uh, thing that uh, we'll see play out a bit more in 2021. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.